You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments below. Be sure to smash that like button. It's obviously a tough night. We didn't perform like we're supposed to do at LSU. It's my responsibility. I throw that to the team. Obviously, we're going to look at it uh, schematically, uh, where we got to get better, which is a lot of areas. Uh, physicality at, at the point of attack, uh, run the football better, stop the run, eliminate the explosive plays. Uh, those things that we have to address and get better real quick. Uh, one game does not define a season, but we do understand that uh, that was a letdown for our fans, and I take responsibility for it. We've got to get better. Well, of course you take responsibility for it. Who else are we going to blame? Um, by the way, for those that are going to come after me for blaming coaching, how about this? Maybe the biggest or second biggest shield that I could possibly have in the history of LSU. Uh, Joe Burrow is maybe the biggest. Tyron Matthew would be the second, if not the biggest. Tyron tweeted after the game on Saturday, I put this on the coaches. It's tough to watch. Play after play, we lose leverage. Technique is poor across the board. Tackling is piss poor. Communication is non-existent. Effort is not up to the LSU standard. That is uh, certainly a criticism that I think many people had. I have a really tough time ever criticizing college athletes. I've gone through this with you before. Uh, sometimes you're just not as good as the person across from you, and that's okay. They're still, despite NIL, they're still amateur athletes. They're not professionals being paid, competing for a job. They're competing for their school and for their state or whatever it may be. And I'm, I, I just have a, I have a lot of trouble just criticizing college athletes. The one thing that I think is fair criticism when it comes up is is effort. If it looks like you're not giving effort, I think that is fair to point out. And that was certainly apparent at times, maybe none more so than at the end of the game with Derek Stingley allowing the touchdown when he gave a very poor effort on the tackle on the sideline. Um, and of course, wearing the seven and being who he is is going to draw an awful lot of attention. But that was the dagger when Kyle Phillips you know, caught the 45-yard Touchdown pass from Dorian Thompson Robinson to put UCLA up 18 in the fourth quarter and send legions of LSU fans in the Rose Bowl headed for the exits. Um, a couple of things from the game itself. Uh, I thought this game answered the eight months worth of speculation that we had, which was, and I'm going to start here. I'll talk about the whole, the entirety of the game, but. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say it again right now. And my guess is many of you listening or watching are, are going to have the same reaction that sometimes kids in movies do when their parents are telling them something and they like roll their eyes and, and like meme the words or mime the words, right? Like, just because, let's say it together because you've all heard me say it a bajillion times. Just because. You get everybody back from a unit that wasn't good. You want to finish it with me? It doesn't mean you're going to be better. You have to improve. And LSU's offensive line isn't good, y'all. This, is, this was a bad unit a year ago, and they're still bad. They got dominated up front by a good, not great, but veteran defensive front from UCLA. LSU could not run the ball. 25 rushes for 49 yards for an average of two yards a carry. You want to talk about a soft-ass Pac-12 team? They whipped you up front. I'm sitting in the Rose Bowl, and they're announcing every starter, and they rattled off 11 defensive starters from UCLA, and every single one of them was a senior. Maybe not a lot of guys that are projectable to the draft, but you got guys that are 22, 23 years old that have been in that system, that play together, that understand the scheme and the concept and what they're trying to achieve, and they ate LSU's lunch. You know the other problem you have? I'm looking at left tackle. There's Cam Wire after Dare Rosenthal left, and he's a turnstile. And you know what they started doing? They start alternating Charles Turner in at left tackle. Charles Turner showed up at LSU as a 220-pound center out of IMG Academy. They work to get weight on him, but he's still your backup center to Liam Shanahan. When your backup center is taking meaningful reps in a road game at left tackle, brother, you got an issue. This team doesn't have talent or depth on the offensive line, and that is their single biggest flaw because they can't run the football and they can't protect Max Johnson. Max Johnson is another point of, of criticism. 
I don't lay this all at Max Johnson's feet, threw for 330 yards, but he had 46 pass attempts. The interception was heinous. Backpedaling off his back foot, we didn't see that a year ago. The almost unthinkable decision with his back to the line of scrimmage to fling the ball behind his back was unspeakable. I have no idea how that majestically landed amid four or five people. The majority, all but one of them wearing a blue jersey, but he got away with that one. Max Johnson made very poor decisions and at times was inaccurate. In the second half, he had two attempts to Trey Palmer that should have been touchdowns. One was on a slant. He had Trey Palmer open at midfield, threw it at his feet. If Palmer catches that in stride, it is six points. The other in the end zone on the home sidelines, as you were looking at it, to the left of the camera. And Palmer had gotten some space. Johnson threw it behind him and low and couldn't come up with it. You could see Palmer's frustration. That was a recurring theme throughout the game offensively. The one thing that we know definitively, and I was getting on the elevator back at the, at the hotel after the game early, or late Saturday night, maybe early Sunday morning, and there were some disappointed LSU fans, and someone said to me, hey, tell me something positive. I said, okay, Keishon Butte's a stud. There was a play in the first half where Max Johnson threw a pass attempt to Butte and it went out of bounds. And, and uh, forgive me, one of the difficult parts about being in the stands is you're not watching the television broadcast, so you don't get a lot of the context. You don't get replays all the time. And, and just there are things you miss when you're, when you're in the stadium. But there are also things you see that maybe the camera doesn't pick up. And in this particular instance, I don't know who number one was from UCLA, but he was the cornerback on the play, and he kind of pinned Butte against the sideline, and the pass was about five yards out of bounds. And the whole way, 50, 60 yards back down the field, the defensive back from UCLA backpedaled, and he was chirping at Butte the entire time. And I said, you done messed up. Because from that point on, Keishon Butte was a man. Seven receptions, I'm sorry, nine receptions in the game for 148 and three touchdowns. He was incredible, unguardable. Even when everyone knows he's going to get the ball, you still can't stop him. That's a credit to Keishon Butte. It was nice to see Jack Besh running out there. He played a ton uh, at the flex spot. He played all over the field offensively. That was certainly a, a, a positive. We saw Brian Thomas, the freshman receiver, have a reception in the ball game. Trey Palmer had a really nice day for LSU as well as we continue to wonder who's that number two wide receiver going to be. Well, I think Trey Palmer certainly established himself potentially as that guy. The disappointing part maybe with Trey Palmer is he muffed the first punt of the game inside the 10-yard line. He was able to recover it, but it put LSU in, a, in an unfavorable situation. Offensively, LSU just objectively wasn't good. We did not see RPOs. We did not see Max Johnson use his legs for positive plays. We did not see passes to the running backs, which was such an integral part of what they did in 2019. And I only referenced 2019 because Ed Ogeron has said over and over again, they're trying to be the Joe Brady offense. He went and asked Joe Brady who to hire, which is why Jake Peets is here. Yet we saw one pass to Josh Williams and one reception from Ty Davis Price. That's it. For something that's so key to your game as you're trying to soften up a defense that was pressuring Max Johnson the entire game, they didn't effectively use short and intermediate routes and passes to the running backs and screens to try to make that defense stay honest, and it's unfortunate. Uh, it was just, it was bad. Defensively, I don't know what more to say. LSU got bullied by that UCLA defensive front. And all last week, all last week, I sat in this chair and I said, man, I watched that team against Hawaii, and on the offensive line, they have big, strong, physical dudes that are mean, that come off the ball at you. And you know what you said? You know what every one of you said? That's Hawaii. I said, hey, bro, I might not have played at a high level, but I did play on the offensive line, and I know what I was watching. And those dudes were coming off the ball and getting into dudes' pads and finishing blocks with bad intentions. And they have two really good running backs that averaged 7.4 yards per carry. LSU, the strength of this team, is supposed to be its defensive front, and UCLA hocked a loogie in LSU's defensive front's collective face. It was embarrassing to watch Zach Charbonnet average almost 11 yards a carry. And because you were so inept at defending the run, that allowed Chip Kelly to take the Ronte Jones to school. Do you realize Dorian Thompson-Robinson only completed nine passes, nine completions for 260 yards? I'm not good at math. That comes out to about 30 yards a reception. 
the hell is this? Tecmo Bowl? It's a real college football game where you fancy yourself as a contender. You want to know why? Because Chip Kelly is an elite play caller, despite his failures at the NFL level. He didn't forget how to call offense. And Durante Jones hadn't called defense in 12 years, and that was at the Division II level. And time and again, we saw Chip Kelly dial up the right play at the right time to get mismatches with backs and tight ends on LSU's linebackers, and that was a mismatch all day long. From the 75-yarder to Dolchich to the wheel route that scored in the second half, we saw it over and again. And you tip your cap to Chip Kelly because he was dominant on that day as a play caller. He knew where his advantage was. He schemed it, and LSU had no response. So you move forward. You hopefully learned a lot about your team and where you need to improve. But my fear with this team is some of the flaws you have are personnel, where when you face a matchup similar to this one in the trenches, it's the oldest cliche in football, but it's true. The game is won or lost where? In the trenches. It's cliche, but it's true. And LSU is going to face teams with better defensive fronts than that one. Florida is a better defensive front than UCLA. Alabama is a better defensive front than UCLA. Texas A&M is a better defensive front than UCLA. Kentucky is a better defensive front than UCLA. And if you can't block and generate some type of a running game and keep Max Johnson upright, you can't function offensively. And when you flip it around and knowing what offenses you're going to face in this league, Alabama should terrify you. Ole Miss, you're going to see tonight without Lane Kiffin, still should terrify you. You saw how quickly Mississippi State could score? That should terrify you. That's a team, by the way, that scored 38 in your building last year and beat you. That should scare you. Nothing's going to come easy for this team this year. They're going to maximize what they have. Coaching staff has got to get better. And hopefully find a way to gain some traction. It's a long season. They're one game in the books. But that one game exposed some massive flaws that I don't know how you fix them without getting better personnel. And this isn't the NFL. You can't go trade for somebody. You can't sign a free agent off the street. Your roster is what it is. So your coaches have to either get better exponentially or, brother, you're going to have a long year. LSU against McNeese, Saturday, the home opener in Death Valley. They should win that one. Should. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.